So I wanted to make a list of what I consider to be the top 12, because I expanded it from 10, comic book movie villains of all time. You still want to see what my list is? Stick around. Thank you for joining it. Welcome back, family. How's everything going? Welcome to Ohana Comics. So, yes, this is my list of the top 12, in my opinion, comic book movie villains. Um, it's not... I'm trying to figure out how I wanted to do this list, and it's not just, oh, well, Joker is the best one. Uh, which portrayal of uh, who did what? There's been multiple people that have played all these different characters. Maybe it's not even so much of the character, but the actor and the way that they portrayed it. Um, I got a little nervous because I was thinking all week about doing this video and then I saw Very Gary put out a video of the top comic book villains. I'm like, no, he beat me to it. And then I realized he was actually talking about villains in comics. And what I wanted to do was portrayals in movies of comic book villains. So I'm going to set a couple of guidelines. Uh, also first, usually I get a 99 cent bottle, but today for this wonderful list, I've got my $1.99. <laughs> Johnny Walker Red Label is going to be my little sipping action tonight. As long as I don't drink Johnny Walker Black, I'm fine because the two times I've had that, it, it, I got uh, really sick from it. I mean, literally just that right there uh, almost gave me uh, an ulcer. So, um, I went by what I felt. It's there are certain uh, portrayals that meant more to me. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to disagree with my list. There are uh, three that I want to rule off. And all three are very good, but uh, I'll give you my reason why. One is uh, Adrian Veidt, Veidt, whatever, from Watchmen. Um, yes, did he blow up multiple cities? Yes, but he was trying to, in effect, save lives. And he was even able to convince other heroes that what he was doing was in the greater good. You know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few type of mentality. It's a little bit of a gray area. I didn't want to judge it, and he was still trying to act as a hero or in, in as bad as it was. Uh, Joker, played by Joaquin Phoenix. Amazing portrayal. I love the movie. However, he's not really a villain in that movie. He's uh, a person who is, you know, going down, spiraling down the, the, the road of... Um, of lunacy and he later becomes a villain but at that point he's really not a bad guy uh i mean yes him shooting the the tv host at the end is not really a good action but i i, I wouldn't consider him the same he wasn't trying to be a villain you know and uh winter soldier played by uh, sebastian stan um that was not under his control okay was he a villain yes but it wasn't bucky it wasn't sebastian stan it wasn't, you know, um, James Buchanan Barnes that was a, you know, a villain. If somebody takes control of somebody else, is that person they take control of then a villain? No. So that's uh, those are the three I wanted to rule off. So without further ado, let's get into my top 12. Okay, great. Coming in at number 12, and I just love the portrayal. It is Scarecrow in Batman Begins, played by Cillian Murphy. Uh, I felt that not just his portrayal of Scarecrow with the mask, but the Doctor without the mask was just spot on, and I had to give a lot of credit to uh, that. That character just made an impact with me. Um, a lot of the Batman uh, Nolan series did, as you will see. Coming in at number 11, I know a lot of people are not going to like this, but I loved it. Ultron by Jay Spader in Age of Ultron. Uh the, the singing of there and no strings on me just it was haunting to me um, it just seemed like it was the perfect portrayal of Ultron the way I wanted to see him in the movies was he the same as in the comics not by a long shot but it worked and I really did really did enjoy it I am not, I know a lot of people just don't like the movie they thought it was the worst of uh, the Avengers which I, I will agree is the worst of the Avengers but it's all four were great to me, it just made a big deal. Okay, moving on to number 10. 
crack in the top 10, Baron Zemo from Civil War and by, played by Daniel Brühl. Now, I really liked Baron Zemo in um, Civil War. Okay, I thought it was a great portrayal. But watching him in Falcon and Winter Soldier took it to the next level. And knowing where he's going to be in the future. And yes, it's not just movies here. I'm being influenced by a TV show. I'm sorry, it's still part of the MCU. I, 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 I love his portrayal. I love the way that they're using this character. This is a really, really great villain. He's a smart person. He's shown that he can fight. It's, it's really good. Moving up, number nine, Vulture by Michael Keaton. Now, this, again, was not a portrayal that was uh, uh, the same as the uh, the comics, which showed, uh, I mean, <laughs> in, in the original Spider-Man, I don't know, when I was a kid, I used to think that Vulture was like 98 years old. Michael Keaton um, plays a character that, uh, man, I, I don't even want to try to define it, but he rationalizes everything in his head that he's doing is within his rights, but he still has that mean streak. But when he turned around in, you know, when he, when he spoke to Peter in the car at, at the homecoming dance, I got chills. I loved it. I thought Michael Keaton, again, just shows why he is such a great actor, such, such a character that he can get into any role. And I, looking back at it now, I can't see anybody else that would be better for it. Let's move see now. Where are we? We're at number eight. Ah, Hugo Weaving, one of my favorite actors, and playing the Red Skull. And I really wish they had actually gotten him for uh, Endgame. That would have made a big difference because um, you could. Uh, uh, it stuck out with me when I didn't see him in Endgame. And but Hugo Weaving playing the Red Skull in the original Captain America: First Avenger, awesome, awesome role. Uh, I love Hugo Weaving and everything. I love him in V for Vendetta. I, mean, I can't call that a villain either because. He's not a villain. He's an anti-hero, I guess you'd say. He's trying to, to fix the wrongs. Um, uh, as uh, in the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, even as the voice of um, Megatron, he, he's just, he's always there and you don't even realize he's there. It's great. Okay, moving up the list. We are at eight and then we had, where am I? Oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. Why did I forget this one? Gene Hackman. Playing Lex Luthor. <laughs> Miss Nesmaka! <laughs> of all the portrayals that I've seen of Lex Luthor, none have ever made me smile and as much as his did. He made genocide humorous. <laughs> it, was, it was so nonchalant to him. He, to me, he is the standard that nobody's ever been able to live up to. Uh, oh yeah, I got a I got a nuclear weapon going for Hackensack, New Jersey. But blanks, my mom lives in Hackensack. Like mm, no, she's gonna be one of the millions of people who die. Sorry, I know Hackensack is not millions of people, but if you know the New York metropolitan area, if you hit Hackensack, you're taking a part of New York as well. So moving up to number six, where are we? Ah, uh, Willem Dafoe playing the Green Goblin. Yes, this was a cheesy character, but it was great. I loved it. And, and more than anything else, I think it's Willem Dafoe's voice that really, you know, it, it, it goes at you. You hear his voice inside that character, and it's perfect for the Green Goblin. The look in his eyes, the smile, the structure of the face, his mannerisms, his acting is perfect for it. When I saw the No Way Home trailer, the one that finally released, hallelujah. Um, yes, I was excited to see Doc Ock, but I was, I got chills when I saw the, the, the goblin grenade and I heard his laugh. Willem Dafoe's laugh, and I'm like, oh yes, that is the part that made me more excited for this film than anything else. I love Willem Dafoe. He's such a well-rounded actor, and he nails Green Goblin in The Amazing Spider-Man. So moving up to number five, Michael B. Jordan playing Killmonger. Now, I had to think about this one for a little while because nothing against his portrayal. His portrayal is amazing. The character is amazing. Michael B. Jordan is an amazing actor. But I had to put it, I was wondering if I was going to discredit this one because is he truly a villain? He's a product of the environment that he was raised in. And 
he, his methods are different, but he was also taught by the military to be a killer. Um, he's trying to liberate his people around the world. He's do, you know doing things in what he thinks to be a positive way, a positive thing for you know to to um to to help an entire race of people. Is he really a villain? And then I remember the scene where Claw is holding who I thought to be his girlfriend because he was making out with her hostage and he just says yeah, boom and he shoots her dude you shoot your own girlfriend to get what you want you're a villain <laughs> so that sealed it for me and now he hits the top five though for his portrayal of killmonger number four kate blanchett as hella man when i heard that kate blanchett was going to play hella i was disappointed because it, i i know i've seen her other work and it didn't make sense. I'm like, she's going to play a Norse goddess of death? I don't think so. Man, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I was wrong. She nails it. She shows class and humor and darkness. And she is. She is death. And she does it with style. Yeah. All props go to Kate Blanchett. I'm so glad. As always, I always seem to be wrong uh, when I don't think that certain things are going to be as good as they're going to be in the MCU. Moving up to number three, Josh Brolin playing Thanos. Cold, calculating, and I understand the, you know what he had to wear uh, as far as size and everything else. And it most, it's just, it's all CGI. I understand that, but they still picked up on his facial expressions. But it's his voice. It is his voice that makes that character who he is, what you know, the, it, it, he did an amazing job with it. Carried it for multiple movies, and that's gonna that's one of the top three villains. Number two, well, if I say number two, everybody knows what knows what number one is gonna be. But Loki for the Avengers, Tom Hiddleston, um, not just in the Avengers, but in the Loki series, in uh, the. the Thor Ragnarok, you know, get, I don't want to play Get Help. I don't want to play Get Help. No, I hate Get Help. He's a great character, a great villain, and he's maturing. He's growing. The character is growing itself, which is kind of funny. You think about it. Loki, I think, is supposed to be 1,500 years old, but in the last 10 years, he's actually maturing. The other 1,490, not so much. So before we hit number one, let's do some honorable mentions. These are ones that didn't quite make my list, but I felt needed to be discussed anyway. Bane from The Dark Knight Rises. Now, yes, the overall movie, this was the worst of the, of the three movies, in my opinion, but Tom Hardy does an amazing job of actually conveying facial expressions and emotions without being able to show his face. <laughs> that, uh, that's harder than people realize. You know, he is able to, you know, uh, emote so much emotion out of his character with the majority of everything covered. Just with his eyes and his gestures and everything else, that is not an easy thing to do, and I think he did a great job. Zod, Terrence Stamp, 1978, Superman 2. <laughs> is there anybody that has watched Superman movies or Marvel movies, or, or what do you call it, superhero movies, sorry, that has not seen at least one emoji or said, kneel before Zot. <laughs> That's such an iconic scene, and it, it's so over the top. To be able to do that for an entire movie, keeping a straight face, um, I, I love it. That's one of those characters that just, just sticks with you forever. Speaking of characters that stick with you forever, Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns, Catwoman. She set the standard that so many people have still tried to to recapture. Um, yeah, that that's 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 Catwoman. I'm sorry. Very very good job. Uh, Harley Quinn, uh, played by Margot Robbie. This one I almost put it into a, a not considered because. She's on Suicide Squad, as many others do are also, and she still fought for things that were right in the first Suicide Squad, even after the chip was deactivated. So, how much of her is just 
not quite all there, and how much of her is actually a villain. She's almost more like a Karen than a villain, but I still wouldn't want to mess with her. Um, but still, though, she does do, play Harley very, very uh, well, and I think that she always needs to be mentioned in a list like this. And I didn't mention this person earlier, Alfred Molina playing Doc Ock. Um, that was, I did get some chills a little bit when I heard him in the, in the trailer, you know, hello, Peter. Um, I thought, uh, I didn't quite like the ending of the move of the, um, Spider-Man part. I think, yeah, it was Spider-Man 2 with him and, um, I really didn't like, I, I was offended personally by the scene of him fighting on the train, knowing that Manhattan doesn't have an overhead, uh, um, tr um, an elevated train, they're actually called at that time. Uh, unless you're way, way, way uptown Manhattan. and But in that area, there is not an elevated train system. So the, the fight scene was great, but that's one of those quirky things that really, really irritated me. Anyway, back to the list. We're going to hit our number one. And if there was ever any doubt, I apologize, but it's going to be Jokers by Heath Ledger. This is a, a portrayal of epic proportions that was... It's never going to be duplicated. The character itself was given so many dimensions, so much love, uh, so, uh, so much depth to it, that and nothing to take away from Jack Nicholson's sort of portrayal. That was a different time. That was a different portrayal of what they wanted the Joker to do. Heath Ledger's Joker is something that will go down as one of not just the best comic book portrayals, but one of the best acting portrayals in movie history, and. We lost a great talent when we lost him, um, but <laughs> I I can't say enough for it. If anybody has in this world has not seen The Dark Knight, you need to go. You need to watch that movie, and really, it's 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 the Joker more than anything else in that movie that makes it what it is. So, what did you think of my top twelve? Not ten, but I had I came up with twelve, an even dozen. Um, did you think that I was crazy? Do you think that I missed any? I'm sure there are some that I've missed. Um, again, these are the movies that I've watched. I'm, I know there are other ones um, that I did not include. Um, I did. I only tried to go with comic book character ones. So even if it was a cartoon villain, I didn't go with it. But uh, we are at the recording time of this video. 497 subscriptions trying so hard to get to 500 three away and when we do we will be giving away the Cates and Stegman signed and Venom annual number one variant edition in a 9.8 white page come on man it's a free signed 9.8 how can you go wrong all you have to do is just go to the 500 subscriber video make sure that you're a subscriber of the channel click like on that video and leave a comment to it. Please make sure that it's clean. Please make sure that it is uh, politically correct. Um, I'm trying to make sure that this is a comic book channel and we all have fun with it. So I got my little silly list here and I can put that down. Ah, another one in the books. <laughs> so hopefully you guys had some fun. Don't forget to cl click like on this particular video because that helps the algorithm and helps me get to higher numbers on my subscriptions which will also get more comics into your collection because I'll be giving them away as we hit milestones. But as always, I'm out.